Santi Akubo was a very, very special guy. Never come on time when he went to play in the national team. <laughs> <laughs> I think he said to come Thursday, uh, Tuesday, he came Thursday and told again a story about his grandmother. I think Yakubo had six, <laughs> six grandmothers. <laughs> and all the media said that he will not be in the squad. And then I put him in the squad and say, if we need you, you come. And it was one nil to Apollo Tel Aviv. And he came, I think, 68 minutes. And two minutes after, he scored an amazing goal. He, sto- he stopped the ball. I didn't know that he ever left-footed. He stopped the ball with the right <laughs> and with, with the back. He strike it so good, 1-1. One, one. And then Yossi Benayun scored the second and we won 2-1 and we went all the way to the champion. But he didn't change anything. He, he continued not to come on time when he had the national duty. <laughs> but also continued to score in goals. <laughs> I have a very good experience with Nigerian players. I had uh, Yakubu, I had John Obi Mikel. Welcome to another show of Feed the Yak podcast. Today, we're with a true football legend, a manager who has graced the dugouts of some of the biggest clubs in the world and who continue to inspire us. Please welcome um, Mr. Avram Grant. Nice to have you, sir. Oh, thank you. My pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Avram, it's good to see you today. You know, I think it's been very, very long. I've seen you. We... We speak sometimes on the phone. We we chat sometimes on the phone, and uh, you know you're a funny man. You know you always after me all the time. And uh, thank you for taking your time to be here today. And uh, thank you, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Avra. My pleasure, always so, to be with you. Always. Okay. <laughs> great, great. So uh, you know, Avra, we're, we're going to ask a couple of questions based on your your experience in the football world, and um, you know, based on um, Yak's period when he was um, in Israel. And um, I think one of the first questions is you've you've actually managed um, biggest clubs in the world, but what, what was the most, what was the biggest challenges you faced, you know, when managing all those clubs? Because you've worked across various clubs in various countries. What would you say is the biggest challenges that you that you've you know that are one of the things that you say is something going into someone going into a coaching role? What what are the biggest challenges you face working across different boards? You mean as a coach? As a coach, yeah. Not as a player, you know. <laughs> as a coach. Huh? Not as a player, as a coach. As a coach. As a coach. As a, as a Yakubu coach, you mean? It's a big <laughs> yes. challenge to be a coach. <laughs> well, <laughs> it would be great to understand as Yakubu's coach as well. The experience of managing Yak, how was it? Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> You know, first about Yakubo, it was a. Uh, I received him when he was very young, I think not even 19. And he was uh, doing fantastic, not just he was a good player, he's a nice guy. And what I liked about him, that he always improved himself. He was better, better, better. And we took champions and he scored, I think, 21 goals, no? Something like this. Uh, he's a top scorer. And then he, of course, left to England and I followed him. And even I played against him when he was in Everton. I was in Chelsea, but against me, yes. he won more than he won against everybody. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Be- I think because I want you to sign me for Chelsea, you know. That's why I have to run more. <laughs> Abra, when you think back, you know, back then in Maccabi Haifa, you know, we had a great time in Maccabi Haifa. Yeah. When you were the manager in Maccabi, we won the league. And I think uh, four years in a row, four years, Maccabi never won the league. But when you came in to Maccabi, and, uh, we won the league with great players, with Yossi Banayu, Harazi, you know, it was great. What do you think about yeah. the team back then in, uh, in Israel as well? Yeah, I think, uh, yes, we took the champions uh, after seven years that uh, Maccabi Haifa was the biggest budget uh, in Israel and still didn't took the champions and I came in 2000 and we took two champions in a row and you was of course big big part of it it was a very good days but we had a very very good team a very good owner uh, Maccabi Haifa people don't know maybe here but it's a very very organized club for many years uh, you face it it's a European club and uh, and when I came by the way we was the, become the third biggest budget because came two owners that uh, 
that uh, to Betar Jerusalem and Apoel Tel Aviv that spend a lot of money. But still, we have a very good team. We have Yossi Benayun that played in Liverpool. We had uh, Yakubo that you know that played everywhere. Uh, we had Giovanni <laughs> Rosto. <laughs> we had Pralia. We had a really, really good team with a balance, good players. And uh, I think this team also can, can do even... No, can do. They did good things in uh, Europe. Very good team uh, with a balance between uh, technique and physically and other things. And we won the league. Even the competition was not so easy. We, we faced against big teams, but uh, we was better. And this is one of my best years these two years. I always remember these years. Going back to, um, I know we mentioned Chelsea briefly there. Going back to your time at Chelsea. So you were, um, I think from memory, I think you have 36 wins and only six loss. And I think the question I'm, I'm just curious to ask is, um, why did you not stay on? Um, because you were, um, you know, I, I, I think from the record, it shows that, you know, you're, you, you were doing extremely well. And this was right after the 2008 Champions League final. Why did you not stay on? No, Chelsea also was a good experience, if I can speak about this. It was, uh, I came to Chelsea when situation was not good after uh, Mourinho left. The team didn't play so well and there was a lot of problems. And uh, I need to fix it and still winning a game because, you know, the owner was very demanding. A very good owner, Abamovic. We lost only one game in the league, by the way, against Arsenal. Yeah. If, I don't count, if I don't count the first game against Arsenal away, when we, we did all the way, I think, from sixth place until the last game of the season that we was the same uh, points like Man United. We beat them two games before, three games before the end of the season, 2-1, and we came the same points from there. I think it was a good year, if I may say, even maybe the best football that Chelsea played uh, uh, was in this year. We played very good football. In the second half of the year, we beat all the big teams. We, uh, we scored a lot of goals. Uh, the team was very, very good. And I thought it can be also a team for the future because everywhere that I go, it doesn't matter, Chelsea, Maccabi, Haifa, or others. I'm working for the present, but also I like to work to leave a good base for the future. That's what we did in Chelsea also. And of course, we came to Champions League final. We did all the way. You know, We beat Liverpool in the semi-final. And we was one, one penalty away to be to be the champions of Europe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it was, yeah. Yeah. But we, so it was it was it was a good season by any aspect. Uh, uh, winnings, uh, very good football. I'm very proud about this season. All right, I think uh, you did win in Chelsea. I'll bring you back to to Maccabi Haifa. I think uh, when I signed for Maccabi, you know, and, you know, we have like five foreign players. We have a uh, Pralia. Then me, then uh, what's it called, uh, Giovanni Rosso. Then uh, you know we have like five foreign players to work with you. I still remember the, you know, after training we have a game on Saturday. You know you have to bring every foreign players to your office when we finish training. <laughs> you still remember that, right? You're like we have to be like we have to stay in the queue. Like <laughs> we have to come stay there like 20 minutes 30 minutes i remember coming to your going to your office I was like yakubu do you know last last week you didn't play very well <laughs> this week i expect more <laughs> from 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 you you know i was like I'll be, in my head you know i was like i've been waiting for like 40 minutes and the the conversation we had is just for like 20 minutes i have to go Everyone, they go home already, you know, like, I'll be there waiting for you. Then uh, you love to put in videos of Michael Jordan and uh, Armstrong, you know. <laughs> Why do you always put these videos for us to see? In the bus, in the, in the, in the stadium, you know. Why do you always put these videos for us to watch? Yeah, you are telling all the secrets of us. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, what? It's he's fun, funny, you know, because everyone, you know, we're like, we're watching, uh, we're football in our head back then, you know, everyone, we speak about it, we as a player, but you don't know, we're like, we're talking about um, f football, why is he showing us Michael Jordan, uh, Armstrong, you know, like, tastes like this, you know, <laughs> even Giovanni, everyone, we, we never liked it, you know. <laughs> 
I, you know, I like to challenge uh, to big uh, to challenge the big players, <laughs> and I had the big players <laughs> there, <laughs> and I like to da- challenge them in a different way in order to take the best from them. And as Yakubu say, I like a good atmosphere, but on the other end, I like that there is a discipline. And uh, I had a very, very good foreigner players, to be honest. And the first year we were six and only five could play. And uh, the competition was uh, very good. But uh, uh, what, what I remember that was also, there was a nice guy, the good to be with them. And all the foreigners was uh, really good, very competitive. Of course, with also with the local players. And uh, oh, I can tell you a lot of stories, but uh, I think that Yakubu is better better in telling stories about me. Uh, but Yakubu was a very very special guy. Never come on time when he went to play in the national team. <laughs> <laughs> and so even I remember, <laughs> I can tell you one thing that one time, one time we played against Apoel Tel Aviv, if you remember, and Apoel Tel Aviv was a very good team with a coach, a very good coach that died uh, f- uh, last week. And I remember we played against them. And, uh, you know, it was, I think, one point uh, different between us. Different. And, uh, and Yakubo at the international game. And, of course, he didn't come on time. <laughs> <laughs> he, came, I th- he came, I think, he said to come Thursday, uh, Tuesday. He came Thursday. And told again story about his grandmother. I think Yakubo had six six <laughs> grandmothers. <laughs> and they, all all the media say that uh, he will not play because the other coach uh, put uh, other players that came also late on the be- uh, not in the squad. And all the media say that he will not be in the squad. And then I put him in the squad and I say, if we need you, you come. And it was one nil to Apoel Tel Aviv, and he came, I think, 68 minutes, and two minutes after, he scored amazing goal. You remember the goal? <laughs> he, stopped, he stopped the ball. I didn't know that he ever left-footed. He stopped the ball with the right, <laughs> and with, with the back, he strike it so good, 1-1. One, one. And then Yossi ben scored the second, and we won 2-1, and we went all the way to the champion. But it didn't change anything. It, he continued not to come on time when he had the national duty, <laughs> but also continued to score in goals. <laughs> so yeah, did, did your grandmother fall ill that time? Right. I think you can tell our grand what really happened. All right, you, you, you know you don't understand. We know we have. Uh... <laughs> I remember when I come late. You know we have to do some uh, finishing. You know, like in training. You know, and then you you have to make me run all the way, like run. I was like, all right, you know, like. The running was too much. You're like, you know what? You come with me. You have to do finishing. Any chances you miss, you have to run down to the other place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah, back yeah. and I do remember. finishing. <laughs> no, no. What I'm saying, <laughs> because it was, it was, it makes me angry that I was late. I said to him, oh, we make technical training. We put goals like this. Even the ball also, the size of the, the goal was the size of the ball. And I say, if you don't, it's a technical. Score. If you don't uh, score, if you don't uh, score, you need to run. And I remember <laughs> that uh, that after the training, Giovanni Rosso asked him, and Yakubo was dead <laughs> because he needed to run so much, and he didn't like he didn't like long running. And I remember at the end of the training, Giovanni asked him. How was the technical training? He said, "What technical? I always running, running, running." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it, it was fun it was fun training with you and uh, you understand you understand me and I think uh, you're one of the managers that understand how to to work with me how to bring in the yeah, best out yeah. of me as well you know and I keep saying to people I said I wish Maccabi Maccabi Haifa is a club in England I think I will never leave Maccabi Haifa because Maccabi Haifa is a great club it's one of the biggest clubs in uh, in Israel Wherever you want in Maccabi, you got in Maccabi because the 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 way they treat you, the way they look after the players, they want the players to be happy. The outside football is unbelievable in Maccabi Haifa, and I had a great time. Four years, two and a half years in Maccabi Haifa was great. With you winning the league in Maccabi for seven years, they never won the league. It's unbelievable. And the one thing, you know, I will never forget, you know, you made me 
you're one of the guys who start the foundation for me to become a top player, which I did in my career, you know, from Maccabi and I moved to, to Portsmouth. And uh, it's just sad that you did not sign me for Western United. <laughs> you remember Western United, we were so close, the same as Chelsea as well. You know, if you can tell me what happened, Western United, it didn't go through. Yeah, yeah. First, it was really a great time in Maccabi Haifa. It's a great club, a great owner, and the structure, everything is good there. And uh, also for me, it was good. We won two times the champion, and we had a good team that I think can be even in the English league because we was really played well. And uh, I left to the national team, but I, I can tell you a secret that I wanted to stay. But the chairman, the president of the national team, spoke with Yankele and he said to all oh, the country need him and I didn't want to leave uh, because uh, we built a very good team and uh, Jakubo was uh, very good I remember that he was when I started he was in the second division as a loan and I remember I that to... I went to I went to see him and uh, Kfasaba yes Kfasaba Kfasaba yeah I went to loan to Kfasaba yeah I went to see him by coincidence, and then uh, Yanka, the, the owner, asked me, how was he? I said, I don't know how is he, but I tell you, the Premier League is better than the, the, the league in Israel is better than the Premier League. <laughs> he said, why? I said, if, the, I say, if, if this player is playing the second division, it means that in the Premier League, there is much better player than him. And I said to him, take him back. And Yakubo came uh, in the middle of the season, he even played one team for the for the youth team, because... Uh, for the but the lower the team and I said to him, don't score too many goals. And uh, then he uh, he came and he played. It was fantastic. He was really, really good player. What I like about him, that he always develop. You can teach him sing and he's uh, very clever to catch it about the movement, about it. When he came, his movement was not great. And then his movement was fantastic because Yakuba is a player that can play with the back and he can play with that. And it's not a secret. I wanted him for Chelsea. And I wanted him to West Ham. West Ham, it's almost closed, but we had the, the general secretary in this club. It was a nightmare, and then he didn't come, unfortunately, because he could help us a lot. And I know how to take the best for me, if I may say so. But but uh, I must tell you that I'm a guy that uh, Jakubo know. I like to coach. I like to develop players, but I like also a good relationship with him, and we stay in a good relationship with him. And until now, I'm angry about him that he ran like crazy against me in Everton. Yakubo never pressed <laughs> against me, start to press. <laughs> but we won one, we won one zero, so it was good. But he did, he did, uh, he did amazing. He did, you did amazing career, amazing career. And I, you, I'm man. proud to be, I'm proud to be part of it. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, thank great, you so great, much. Great. And I think uh, you know when you look back, you know we were very close to West Ham United, you know. And I try to, you know, you know, players, we try to fight our way to move, to make the transfer happen, you know. And we were close and I have to train with the, the second team in uh, in uh, Everton back there, you know, because I was fighting to, to leave because I didn't get enough chances to play when I came back from my injury, you know, but it didn't happen, you know. I think then I think I was thinking already I would be one of the, uh, Western United player, but it did, didn't go through. But people didn't know about we were fighting for me to sign. You were fighting, you know. I still remember when I see you, I was like, You didn't fight enough to get me. You remember, I told you, you made me train for train with the second team. And you're like, It's not my fault, it's the, it's the ball that didn't make it happen. You know, it was close. The same at uh, Chelsea as well. You know, we were very close for me to come to Chelsea. People keep asking, yeah. how come you never play a bigger team? I was like, I wish they know I was very close to to play for Chelsea. It was Spurs, Tottenham, I was very close and I got my injury, you know. It was sad. Yeah, yeah, it's and, uh, true, it's true. So I, wanted an, I, wanted, uh, I wanted him before Anelka, but, uh, you know, <laughs> life is taking you some places, you know, you don't know. But I really, I really enjoy your career. You did an amazing career. <laughs> And you are a top scorer. Always score. Always, you know to score. 
Yeah, so Avram, I've got, I've got one question here about, you know, you've managed a lot of big legends, you know, with Ego and, um, you know, and, you know, people like Yakubu and Cole in terms of um, having issues, you know, with lateness and all that. And what what was your strategy on, on in, you know, dealing with players that had a lot of big egos? Yes, yes. I was dealing even in Israel with big egos and everything. I think ego is can be is not a bad thing, you know. It become our worst enemy for sure. But also, it's good that I like I like players that have a self confidence and everything. Uh, how I deal with them, I'm very uh, I'm very honest with them. When they are doing well, I tell them. When they are not doing well, I'm not telling them. I always try to take the best from them. I always try to add something to them. I think the most important for football players is to be curious and uh, how to improve yourself, how to you improve your quality, and especially big players. Uh, because they have big, big quality, it's more easy for them to develop. But sometimes they don't like it. They like to stay in their end, play with the ego. So my, I think my job is to remove the negative ego and make them concentrate about the career and about uh, their job. And I think uh, the key is to be honest with the player, to speak with them and uh, speak with them. Normally, when I do, I'm not happy, I'm speaking face to face. If you follow my career, I never speak against uh, publicly against players yeah. or against my staff or against owner. But face to face, I say what I think. And sometimes I say it very, very directly. But they know that I will protect them. I think you, we need to be honest with these players. Yeah, yeah definitely. Avram, what about you, Malish Postmot? I remember you work with uh, King, King, the King, you know, you, the King, Kanu. Then uh, you work with uh, jo, uh, the King, we call it the King, and uh, John Otaka. You remember John Otaka? At first, I have a very good experience with Nigerian players. I had uh, Yakubu, I had John Obi Mikel. Uh, I had even a player that came for one game in uh, Portsmouth uh, against the uh, South Africa. He scored goal. Uh, yes, my experience was that uh, Kanu, I know him when I was a director in 2006. And uh, I came as a coach in 2010. By the way, he was the same age. And... Uh, <laughs> 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 but... Uh, uh, Kanu was was a Kanu was a top player, top top player. He, he have a, first he's a very very nice guy off the pitch. We are still in contact. Uh, he's a very very clever. He's good with the ball. He understands the game well. I I received him when he was you know in the end of his career, but still uh, he gave his contribution. He scored some goals and uh, and he did uh, well. Utaka is uh, different. Utaka is a big big talent. But I think he was not so ambitious about his career. And uh, I managed to give him this ambition, if I may say. And he did well for us. Uh, because in those times, Portsmouth was a club without management, without owner, without nothing. We couldn't buy any players because uh, they punished us because of the management. They took uh, nine points from us and then uh, 18 points from us. And we put all our efforts in the cup, in the cup. And I think it was sensational that the team from the bottom of the league did all the way to the final. And even in the final against Chelsea, we missed penalty with Boateng at 63 minutes when it was 0-0. I'm not good in penalties. I also, with Jakubo, lost the final in penalties in Israel. And oh, uh, you, still, you still remember <laughs> that? <laughs> yeah, cup yeah, yeah. in Israel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are so late for this game. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and Utaka, uh, we played against uh, Birmingham. Uh, we was one in, and he scored fantastic two goals and we won 2-1 in the quarterfinal and came to the semifinal. He's a big, big talent. Uh, I think it was a gap between his talent to what he achieved in his, uh, in his life. But he was a good player. Because I, I, remember, I have a good I think, experience. I, mu I must tell you that I have a good experience. Yeah, I remember that I called you. Remember, Akubo, and asked how he is. <laughs> I remember he asked me, say, I say, is Otaka Nigeria? I say, yeah, it's Nigeria. He said, you don't behave like Nigeria. 
Uh, I remember I called you and you said to me so that he, he was not player. late. <laughs> he, he because, like because, <laughs> because I was, he was not, he was not there when I came. He only came after two months after injury or something like this. Yeah, but, but he scored fantastic two goals that uh, lead us to the semi final. So, Avram, I've got one question about your time at Chelsea. You know, you inherited a Mourinho's team that had a style of play, um, Mourinho's philosophy. How did you change that from, you know, Mourinho's style of play to your style of play and turn it around to a winning team? Because Mourinho's philosophy, you know, is very heavily defensive. How did you change everything around? First, we, we need to be honest with Mourinho. He did, uh, when he came, they took two champions. Uh... And it was a new era because uh, the owner of Mamovic came with a lot, a lot of money. And he came uh, with money when uh, Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool and others didn't have money. It's not like yeah. today. And he used the money well. And we need to say a good word about Abramovich that he, he built a brand. Chelsea was a brand. Yeah. Not now, not this year, yes. But he built it from a club. He built the brand. And I remember when I spoke with him, I said to him, uh, let's build the club, not a team. And he did it very well. He did it very well. And we built a very good club. In Mourinho, the first two years was good. The second also was not bad. And then uh, I think Mourinho started to be nervous. I think it was his first time. It's the first time that he faced failure because before he did very well in uh, Porto and in Chelsea, uh, in the league, because in the in the... In Champions League, uh, Chelsea lost two times to Liverpool in the semi-final of the Champions League. And uh, I remember that when we came to the semi-final of Champions League, it was very strange because it, I think it's the first time in the history that two teams from the same country uh, face each other in Champions League in the same stage. It was the third time in four years that Chelsea faced against Liverpool, two times they lost. And I was very happy that we won and he came to the final. We played fantastic in this semi-final. And, uh, and it was, uh, yes, we need to change the, the team because the team didn't play well and we want uh, to be more attacking and more, uh, and more uh, to play on the ground, not long balls on Didier that he played before. And uh, I did a few things. For, for I bought a, a first assistant coach, Hank Tenkate, that was in uh, was the assistant of Rijkaard in uh, Barcelona, and then he was head coach in uh, in Ajax, which was the message for the players. From now on, we play football because Barcelona never play long balls and things like this. I spoke with Didier about this. He was happy from this. He said, "No, I like to play football." And then uh, we changed the uh, the midfield that we played uh, with Michael Essien as a right back. And Balak and Lampard together in the midfield. That was uh, give us a lot of uh, holding the ball, and I think it was uh, very good. So and the system of the trainings. By the way, it was a lot of good things in the time of Mourinho. So I wanted to keep it, and uh, we kept it uh, through the assistant Steve Clark. But we move forward, and I think uh, if I'm looking back, uh, I think it could be very very best for the future because we really played. If if I not objective and yes objective, it was the best the football that I remember Chelsea's playing. Yep, 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 yep. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah. right, that, that's uh, when I when I look back and I see you, you've been so many you've been so many clubs. You you you, you coach Ghana and then you coach Zamb Zambia. Yeah, I think. How did you find it coaching the African? Uh, uh, country, you've been to Ghana. Look, you were Ghana for like two years. You were very, very unlucky. Then you you went out. Then you been to the Ivory, the Ivory Coast now. Then uh, you out already. What do you think? Ah, first uh, I love Africa. I was visiting before uh, also Africa. You remember why? It's because Sophie, of me. That's know? why you love Africa. <laughs> huh? <laughs> because of me. That's why you love Africa. <laughs> No, because you of you, I didn't like Africa. Africa. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, I, I had a good experience with African players. Yakuba, I think, was... No, the first one was Mekanaki from uh, Cameroon. And then... Uh, but he came... Uh, he came 33. Mekanaki, Cameroon. 
Yeah, yeah. I came to Maccabi Tel Aviv. I brought him to Maccabi Tel Aviv in '94. He was 33 years old by the passport, and then, <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and, then and, and then I had a good experience. My, I had a good experience. He played very well for Maccabi Tel Aviv. He won the champions, uh, the cup, and then. Uh, uh, the, then I had a very good time with Yakubo and I started. I like our European uh, African players because first they are good players and athletes, and second they are nice people. But if I may say, they are lack of mentality. We need to push them uh, to be, you know, more strong mentality and more winners. But uh, I like them very much. I have a very good experience with African players. Not even one let me down. Uh, so then I then I get an offer, and I visited a lot of time in uh, in uh, in Africa. Even I was with my wife. We was in uh, many countries. You know my wife Sofit, Yes, Yakubo. Yeah. She is the boss. She is the she is the real boss until now. She is the boss. So, uh, the boss yeah. <laughs> uh, she is the real boss. I asked her permission to speak with you. She said, "With Yakubo, you can speak. He's a nice guy." So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so <laughs> and then I, I got offer yeah, yeah yeah and then I received offer from uh, Ghana Ghana was in a very bad situation after the World Cup in 2014 they didn't qualify even they needed uh, I think one point or two I don't remember what happened they didn't qualify a well, lot of issue with money a lot of issue with uh, management and uh, they asked me to come I came to Ghana to be honest, I was very surprised because the supporters didn't like the team. They say they're thinking only about money. They don't think about the team. And uh, we created in a very short time a good team. And we did all the way in Africa in 2015 to the final. We lost the first game, but we were sure very strong mentality. Like I like in, I pay a lot of attention in my teams and about the mental side. We were very strong. We did all the way. Even we beat the home team in the semifinals, 3-0. And we came all the way to the final against Ivory Coast. Again, like in the final of Champions League, it was much better than Ivory Coast, but we lost with 22 penalties. I'm not good in penalties. You're not good in penalties. <laughs> next, <laughs> next, next time I will have a penalty, I will leave the stadium. So, uh, <laughs> he, started, yeah. he started in Israel already, you know, when we played the uh, cup game, we lost at the penalties. Then you lost uh, with Chelsea, you lost with Ghana. It's sad. I know you work so hard, you know, you want to win something for Chelsea. You want to win something and you know, in Africa. And, and you, you know, what amazing that in the final of in the Israel, the cup, in the final of the Champions League, in the final of Africa, no doubt that we was much, much better, the better team. So, but this is football. And, this, and I stay in Ghana, it was very, very nice. I enjoyed very much. The second time it was semi-final. Uh, we get semi-final. I think since then they didn't reach even a quarter-final in Africa. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I think we also, I left a good legacy there, but they didn't, the new president uh, decided uh, to change it. I don't know why. Uh, and it's pity because Ghana always have a very, very good player. And then uh, I decided uh, to take a break because I was in football since, I don't know if you know, this year, I was 50 years since I started my first coaching. I started wow. 18 years old. Wow. And uh, as a coach, yes, yes. I don't think there's ma many coaches that have 50 years because most of the coaches become... Mazato. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And then I came to Zambia, and I think we did an amazing year. I'm, uh, uh, I started last January. After nine years, we qualified to Africa, and we beat Ivory Coast 3-0. And uh, we came first time to Africa. And in Africa, uh, we had problem with uh, preparation that hurt us. But uh, also, we play. We was in a group with uh, uh, two teams that much better than us on the paper, like uh, Congo and uh, and uh, Morocco. And we did one one with Congo after we was winning one nil against uh, Morocco. We was uh, we lost one zero. But if you sell the game, we deserve at least at least a draw. Yeah, yeah. And I think. Uh, and I think it's a big de development for Zambia because Zambia, on the paper, is not Ghana, and we big big development that can we can beat uh, with the big teams in Africa. I think in equal side. So uh, I'm very proud of what we did in Zambia. It's a big achievement. 
you know, comparing your, you know, comparing being a, a nation's um, manager to to being a club manager, what, what are the key differences? How do you how do you approach matches? You know, these are countries, the guys you bring in, a short space of time to start playing together as a team. How do you approach all that to get them to 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 play together and being able to perform at a certain level? Of course, it's a big, big difference. I remember that 2008, I think Capello uh, received the national team of England and he called me and he said, can I come to speak with you? I said, what about? He said, it's the first time that I'm going to be coach of national team. I want to know what is the difference. There is a big difference. With the, with the club, it's more easy to develop because you are with the players every day. Every day. Uh, you have game every week, so we have uh, even if you lose or you win, you have the game after immediately. So you can, uh, how do you say, uh, learn from mistakes, learn from the good things, and continue. So you can develop game by game. And if you watch my team, they always in the beginning of the season there was better, better, better every every game. Uh, and this is in a club. It's very in a, in a national team. You have them only for a few days, and you need to take uh, the best from them. And there is also like different, but the only thing, the only good, the good thing that in national in national team, all the country is behind you. And if you do well, everybody is happy. I remember that we came back from Ghana to Ghana after we we lost the final, and thousands of people was waiting and thousands on the street. And I said to the players, "Look, you have a privilege. It's not that you play for you; you make other people happy." And in Zambia, the yeah. same. I remember that we beat against Ivory Coast. We couldn't leave the stadium. Millions, millions was so happy. Wow. And I think uh, it's a privilege. But the difference that you need to prepare the team in a very short time. So uh, you need to to uh, create a good base. But always there is one or two players that injured and uh, you need to take care of it. And, uh, and uh, also you cannot buy players. Let's say if I was in Chelsea and I have a problem with the left back, we could yeah. buy a left back. Yeah. Here you cannot do it in the national team. You need to take the best from the players that you have. So it's a big challenge. So I, I think going, I think that leads us now to the next question. How do you select players for the national team? How do you select the best players? Because there's so many players around. How do you select the best players? Because you don't know them. I well. No, I said to the players also, I, said, I have three, three criterions. First, uh, quality. Quality is the most important. Second is... Passion, passion and mental side. And third, that you need to show that you are ready to play for your country, that you're ready even to sacrifice for your country. This is national team. Because you don't play for yourself also. You play for yourself, yes? Because if you do well, everybody is happy. But you play for the people in the, in the street, the people in the villages, the people in the, in, the, in the other people. You are for them everything, the national team. And you can make them so happy. I, will, I told you, I will never forget the national team when you're doing well. So many people are happy and proud. Yeah. So this is the three criterions. First is quality. Second, I check their mentality and passion. And third, uh, uh, the willing to give everything for your country. If they don't follow even one of the three, I will not take them to the national team. Take them. Everyone, can you... So what's the, uh, what's the way forward for you now? Are you still going to be in uh, Zambia or you want to move forward to another country to coach? I, I, will, I will tell you, I will tell you, you know, with the age, you, you, you change a few things in your life. You keep the basic, you change. But there is, for this question, I have always the same answer. When I come to a team and you know you was with a team, I'm very organized. I know what I'm doing. Now yeah. I know what I'm doing next week. I know what I'm doing next month. I have a vision for the uh, 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 for the club. I'm very organized. In my private life, including where I will be in football, I never plan. I never plan because you never know what will happen. When I was in Israel, I, I didn't dream even to be the coach of uh, the big teams and national team. I started as a coach under 12. And when I was yeah. coaching Maccabi, Maccabi Haifa, I didn't think about uh, the Premier League and it's happened. So I think I think in life, in life, and this is education of my parents. Ever, whenever you go, do your best, and then good things will happen. I never planned. Interesting, interesting. So, um, in terms of you know um, what you've seen so far of the African Nations Cup, um, 
you know, based on level of playing and everything, how, how would you, what, what would, what's your review? How would you rate it? You know, based, based on over the years, how we've seen is there a massive improvement in terms of the players, the type of football that they're playing now in Africa? Uh, look, uh, every lecture that uh, I lecture, I started with a, a quote that I say, nobody has enough talent to live on the talent alone. Uh, I remember when I came to Africa 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I saw, I see, I saw so many talents, so many talents. And I say what's happened, and then I saw the pitches, and I saw the quality of education of the coaches and the players, and I saw that there is a big gap between them to Europe, to be honest. I love Africa. I really love Africa. First, I must tell you that uh, the organization in the, in the Ivory Coast was fantastic, the organization African. Big, big improvement uh, from the days that I was... Uh, I, it was also not nice when... I, it's my third African, you know that. So the yeah. first uh, the first two was, uh, was not so bad and everything, but now it was very, very professional. The organization was off the pitch was uh, very good. Even all the rumors about the referees, uh, we had them less than before. You know that I speak very honestly with you. But, yeah. And I think also also in many countries in Africa, there is a problem. It's not like in Europe, because I say, I remember that I said to Infantino, uh, the ex-president of FIFA, if you take the organization in uh, Europe and you put it in Africa, Africa will be better than Europe, because there is a very good player, People are very nice. People are happy. I love really the atmosphere. I enjoy very much when I come to Africa. Every time that I come to Zambia, Ghana, whatever, I enjoy very much from the atmosphere. So, but but in the other end, there is a bigger point. I spoke with the coach of Congo. I spoke with the other team that was really behind by the organization, and there is a bigger movement. No doubt for me that if this thing is around, like uh, pitches organization, education of coaches and backroom staff will improve, Africa will be top of the world. I say to Infantino, even the, the head of the African Masemba, I told him, I guarantee with you, I guarantee with you, if these things will improve, you will be semi-final of uh, the World Cup, every World Cup, at least one oh. team. I think more. That's, that's for sure. Because there, there is a talent in Africa and there is a very nice people. Yeah. Have a quick one. Who was the best Israeli players you ever managed? A quick one. Um, the, the who best was? Israeli, the best Israeli player you've ever managed. You. You. <laughs> no, I'm not Israeli. I'm talking about in Israel. I'm Nigerian. I'm talking about Israel. Every, everybody in Israel said to me that you have Israeli. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to them, I said to them, you choose. You choose. To come on time, to come on time you choose the African way. <laughs> you did this, you choose the Israeli way. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, 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 I'll help you. <laughs> I, I, I remember, you know, we, we normally we do meetings, you know, before game every Friday, if we have a game on Saturday. Marco was your assistant manager back then, you know. Marco. Yeah, Marco, Marco was your course, assistant. Marco. Marco used to be the one to translate, you know. Like, he would sit yeah. close to me to translate. I remember one day it was like, don't translate anymore. You understand Israeli already. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, then Marco said to me, he said, you know what? Just pretend when I speak, just nod your head like this <laughs> so that I can keep my job. You, understand? <laughs> you, know, you know why I let Marco translate? Why? <laughs> because he doesn't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. 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 We, have, we, we, we have a great time with Marco and the uh, so what about Eyad Benkovic how did you cope with Eyad Benkovic in the uh, yeah. what about him what how do you feel Eyad Benkovic as oh, a player Eyal was a top oh. Eyal was a top top player top player I think uh, the way that you see everything on the pitch, his passes, his uh, knowledge, his wisdom in the in the game, was very good, and uh, his movement was fantastic. Uh, I think by the how do you say cre cre read the game, Eyal was one of the best, even in England. Uh, and you know, as a striker, when you make the move, he always give you the pass on the right time, and uh, 
I rate him as a very, very good player. And he did an amazing career. I think 10 years in England, it's not easy. You know, I, play, I played with him in, uh, in Portsmouth. I remember yeah. I came from uh, Man City, yeah. And I went, you know, sometimes I, I, I like to run to the left side, you know. Then he say, Jacob, <laughs> there's no money there. Go inside. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no money there. Go inside. <laughs> then, <laughs> you know, I scored 10 goals I from a yard. It's unbelievable. I heard, that, I heard that the teacher also think that we will not speak about it here now. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, yeah. He, he was a good player. He was a good player. And I was uh, very lucky to coach uh, almost in this time all the big Israeli players like uh, Yossi Benayoun that did an amazing yeah. career. And uh, and uh, and Avi Nimni that was amazing, amazing player. Avi Nimni was uh, unbelievable also in uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv. Yeah, uh, it was also for me in the national team, uh, unbelievable player. People don't know in uh, in England. He played in Derby County, by the way. He scored even one goal. But uh, and and he didn't have patience to stay in those times. Israelis like to to come back to Israel, but. Uh, And Yossi Benayun, you know him, you played with him, he was a very good player. And uh, yeah, yeah, I had a good player. Even Maccabi Haifa, I remember Ruben Atta. We had a good player. I, I was lucky to coach uh, very good Israeli players. Also, when I started in Petah Tikva, you don't know the names, but it was amazing players and a very good striker. Uh, yes, I, I was lucky to be in Israel also with uh, very good players, and we took champions with them, and all oh, second place. And uh, and a uh, few of them play in Europe, like uh, Ben Ayun that play in uh, in Liverpool and Chelsea and Chelsea, Arsenal. Arsenal. Yeah. He was in Spain, but he went from Israel to Spain. Then from Spain, I will yeah. I will tell you I will tell you the story. We played the semi final against uh, Liverpool, yeah. and uh, it was it was after Chelsea lost two times in the semi final. And uh, we were, we drew one one away, and then we played home. And I remember that I told Ashley Cole about Yossi Benayou play on the right side. That Yossi never never uh, you know beat the player to the line. He always take the ball uh, inside. Inside. Yeah. And we was we was and we was winning one nil, and we played fantastic. And then 70 minutes something like this, Yossi Benayou took the ball, came inside, and gave fantastic assist to Torres. And then we did 1-1. One, one. And then we beat them on the extra time. I remember that I met him in the corridor. He said, next time I will kill you if you do it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I, have a, I have one more question. You, you manage um, two top, you know, African legends um, in the likes of Yak and um, um, Didier Drogba. Um, this is a controversial question. Who would I say? What would Come you say? On, was, <laughs> wait, wait, who would what? you say was your was your you know you know your best, your favorites, or the easiest to manage? In Drogba uh, and no, but, Yak. You you mean the African players that played for me? No, I'm talking about Drogba and Yak in specific specifically. The easiest to manage, the best. With different players. Drogba versus Yak. Uh, look, uh, the player that I was uh, coaching for Africa was uh, really amazing uh, players. I think Drogba was a fantastic, fantastic uh, player, but he played in a big team. Yeah. I think if Yakubo would play in a big team, he, he, he would do, he could do the same because he the was a top thing, yeah. scorer. And I say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Yakubo can play with the back and can play also. You can give him to the space, and he know how to score, except the miss that he missed with Nigeria one time. <laughs> that I told him the pass. You you remember you you remember I called him. I said to him the pass was not so good. So uh, <laughs> I remember you called but, me. It's like the pass was not so good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I think uh, I I think he did amazing career. And uh, Michael Sien was fantastic player. Pity that he was injured at such a young uh, age because he could uh, bad injury and he finished his career. And John Obi Mikel uh, did well. It was not easy. It was in position yeah. of Mekalele. That Mekalele, for me, is the best defensive midfield uh, ever. Uh, so, uh, a legend. And, and uh, 
what and and even Kalu play also Kalu I think Kalu. one of the most Kalu was Salomon Kalu was most one of the most efficient players compared to the minutes that he's playing. You can <laughs> check it how many he scores. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yes, and and of Kalu and of course Kanu that uh, I I received Kanu when he was in the end of his career as a as a director in 2006 and then as a coach in 2010. Amazing player, yes. I cannot co- compare, but each one of them was uh, uh, was unique, unique for himself. Yes. However, we we're very close, you know. We we're very close, like I said before. We we're very close not to sign for West Ham United. Close yeah, yeah. Not to sign for Chelsea. You know, people keep wondering, like, how come you never play for this big club? And I was like, I wish they knew we were close. Then I got injured. You remember, I got injured. And uh, you try to call someone in Switzerland for me to go for operation, you know. Remember, we we, we, we speak yeah, 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 yeah. a lot, you know, like say, we get second option. We were very close with Pini as well, you know. We want to see if we can yeah, yeah. do it. I can come back in three months. And it took me 11 months to to come back. That's why it took me so long. I never yeah, played yeah. for one of the big clubs in, uh, in England, you know. I was lucky enough, you know. Good career, you know. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, but uh, you you know you can see the how do you say the con from two sides. From one side, if you were not injury, you was in Chelsea, and the other side, uh, the block, uh, the the transfer to uh, to Mexico to to, to West Ham. But in the other side, you did a very good career. You was in Everton. Yeah. You was in uh, in Portsmouth. You did well. You always score. I think I think every year you scored more than fifteen goals. Which is yeah, amazing. Mm. Yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah. So I remember so, that uh, uh, that in in uh, in Ghana, I had a striker that I think he was he was top top talent, Jana Samoa, that he played in uh, Sunderland a little bit. And uh, by the way, when I came, he said to me, "Oh, coach, don't forget that I scored against you when I was in West Ham." I say yes, but you lost two one. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So I I said to I said to myself yeah I said to myself why I went to UAE if we would stay in the the Premier League it could be amazing but you know yeah. we don't we cannot live uh, life with if I think uh, yeah Kubo you had an amazing career and uh, and of course uh, you always think about what you miss but I think in this in your case you can think about what you did you did amazing you did amazing for me in Maccabi Haifa and you did amazing for you in the Premier League. Thank you, Avron. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. So, I've got one one last question for you. What's next for you, um, um, Avram Graham? What's next for you? What's the plan? You're planning to go on vacation, Miami, just to relax on the beach What's and next? Uh, go with the wife, or you just want to just retire? <laughs> you ask me. Yes, ask yes. You, or you come you... to Nigeria with me just to relax? No, I, I told you. Uh, I, I think I answered the question before. I, I okay. never think uh, in in my life what will happen even uh, tomorrow. tomorrow. I'm very very okay. organized. I very very organized in my job. Any job that I take. Also, I, t- I say to my children, any job that you take, do it 100. percent So I'm very proud that I did it all my life. So I'm very in in my job. You can ask me what you will ha- what will happen next week, next month. I mean by the organization side. Yeah. In my life, I don't know. I don't know what will happen. Life took me to a very, very good journey, and I hope the journey is still continue. Continues. And I never planned. I never planned that there will be in England. I never planned that there will be in Maccabi Haifa. I never planned that there will be in Ghana, and I never planned that I will be in Zambia. You know, things are coming. I'm check. I'm checking if it's good for me. It's if it's a good challenge because I like challenges, so I take it. And if not, I continue with my life. Avran, I just want to say thank you for taking your time. You know, it's been sorry for the delay. You know, like you know, like say UK time, Africa time, Nigeria time. You know, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it happens. You know, but you know, thank yeah, you so yeah, much. Okay. And, uh, thank you, thank been, you. You've been nice to me from day one. Thank you very uh, much for your time. And thank I you. I'll, I'll see you soon. Masato. Thank that, you, that's a great bo- ending. both of you. Thank, Thank you, you both of much. you. It's a good time, and especially to you, uh, Yakubo. Always good to see you. It was good to see you on the pitch, and good to see you off the pitch. Thank you. 
Thank okay. you, Avra. Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much. I have a Appreciate great day, Avra. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Avra.